Hey guys and welcome to episode 3 of the 10,000 hours project. So it's 7.45am this morning, I'm starting off with my training program but firstly I'm doing a technical conditioning test. Basically it's continuous training, I'm going through a technical circuit for 10 minutes straight. Now I'm just going at a nice steady pace, about 60-70% of my maximum. I want to see how many laps I can get within the 10 minutes. Now just incorporates a bunch of different movements that you might find on the pitch. So obviously the dribbling at the start, then you've got some hurdles with some jumping, a zigzag dribbling movement, and a quick shuffle through the slalom poles towards the end. Now I know this test doesn't seem football specific in the sense of fitness movements. I know it should be a bit more intense. However, continuous training and conditioning can really help your overall fitness and overall management of your body. It also gets you really prepared for the season ahead. And I'll talk about this later when I talk about my training program later in the video. Now overall, I think the test went decently well. I ended up getting 16 laps and three quarters for my initial phase results. Now once phase one of my training program is complete over the next three weeks, I'm gonna retake the test and see if I can get a higher score. Now you notice here as I finish, I do a quick recovery run after the 10 minutes. Now this is gonna help improve your cardiovascular system, the way you breathe and your ability to bring your heart rate and breathing down back to a normal state. I also find it can help me keep mentally disciplined you know, telling yourself to get this job done, even though your body's stressed and you really don't want to, you just want to sit down. Now moving on, I'm performing a basic dribbling T exercise. Now you just have the five cones and create a plus or a T sign. I'm starting from the middle and I dribble out to each cone. So I go for two sets and four repetitions. So my first set, I just use the right foot and I rotate all the way around and that counts as one repetition. I do four reps in total with about 20 second rest in between. My sharpness in my dribbling still seems a bit off to me post-surgery, but I'm definitely looking to improve it by consistently working on it. The second set, I do the exact same thing with my left foot only. It's important to see I'm using the inside of my foot as I turn. It's important to get not only used to using both feet, but also used to directing your turns both inside and outside. I'm now moving on to control and I work, I'm working specifically with trapping here. So firstly I'm just performing 20 repetitions working on my dead touch trying to stop it inside the square. I do two sets, so 20 with my right foot and 20 with my left foot. I just added in my mistakes as well just to keep this transparent and real guys. You know, I'm angry for about five seconds, then I bounce back and I get straight back into it and I improve upon it. So now moving on, I'm working on my directional trap. So I take my first touch towards one of the four cones and I make one full rotation and that counts as one set. So I do five sets in total. And there you just notice me scan behind me as well. So try and make it game specific as well guys. Always looking over your shoulders to create awareness for yourself. Right, so just got done with my individual training, with my aerobic conditioning tests. Overall, I was pretty happy with the results. As you've just seen, I've had my protein berry shake as well, just so my body can recover quickly and efficiently. As you've noticed, I'm taking a different approach today to filming this vlog, and I really want to show the training sessions today, and it's going to be less about me talking. If you've seen my last video down in the comments section, in the feedback section that I've written, I've mentioned that I have, I've had an issue, obviously, uploading consistently it's, it had been I think over 40 hours since I uploaded the previous video it should be you know going up every 24 hours and I'm just trying to find my feet you know what's comfortable for me and how can I bring out the best quality content for you guys for what the series is supposed to showcase and that's the 10,000 hour project the journey the training and it's got to be less of the vloggy talking side of things you know but I really think the last few days it was necessary for me to be talking a lot so I could explain what the project's about so I can explain my nutrition um, I'm gonna be talking today more about um, obviously the training program um, that I'm going through over the next 8 to 12 weeks so obviously there are times where I need to be talking but the majority of the project I think moving forward will be 
the actual training sessions. Anyway, we're gonna move forward. As I mentioned in episode one, I'm gonna be talking about my 2018 conditioning, technical, overall training program. And I think it'd be good for me to go in depth with it see, to see if you guys wanna follow along or if you're just interested in hearing about the training program um, that I'm undertaking this season. Anyway, let's dive into it. Here again, I'm just using Google Sheets to organize my training plan for the season. I mean, it's simple, I know, but it really works for me. Um, and today, obviously, I'm going to delve into these phases, the four phases that you guys are probably confused about in episode one. Now, obviously, before we delve into the four phases, today I've done a technical aerobic endurance circuit test. So I'm going to put my initial results in today. So I've got 16 laps and three quarters done within the 10 minute period. So that's a decent first hit out. So now we go back to a 2018 conditioning program. So let's talk about phase one. So today's obviously March 19th. So today's the start of the training program. So each phase will involve a specific attribute that relates to football and fitness. So, so obviously the attributes are endurance, strength, power, speed, agility, and general conditioning. Phase one lasts for three weeks. And within this phase, I've got a working on continuous endurance, foundational strength, no power training, low speed and agility training, and balance, stability, and flexibility for my general conditioning. Now you've got the three in these brackets here, and what that means is you've got to work on these specific attributes for the three weeks within phase one. We're going to detail of each attribute right now, so we'll talk about endurance first. So you've got three types of endurance training, and there's three progressions. You've got continuous training, interval training in phase two, and speed endurance in phase three. Now, continuous training is basically exercising at a continuous sort of steady pace for a prolonged period of time. And I know it's not really football specific, but it really helps with the overall conditioning and overall fitness of your body and gets your body prepared for the season ahead. And I honestly believe it helps prevent injuries. It quickens the recovery process between each training session. It just helps your body adapt and prepare to be ready for the following progressions of endurance. So in phase two, you've got interval training. So that's a bit more football specific. So interval training is obviously split up for short, several intense bouts. So maybe 20, 30 seconds at a time, followed by a slow jog as, as active recovery. And then you go straight back into the intensity. So interval training is going to really help you last for the 90 minutes on the pitch. Now speed endurance is another level above, so it's probably the most demanding out of the three. If you want to get really in depth, it's basically asking you how efficiently can you remove the lactic acid waste out of your legs, out of your system, you know, so you can recover and go at another 110% with your next sprint within a game. Interval training and speed endurance are almost very similar in the concept that how quickly you can recover in between each sprint. So for the next three weeks, I'm going to be focusing on continuous training. So before we go any further, I really want to mention something, and I feel it's probably the most important part of, the tr of why I'm doing this training program. Hopefully, it'll make sense to you guys. So what I really believe in in this training program and what helped me a lot last season is I believe in building a big foundational strength base first. So building that maximal strength, getting your squat up, getting your deadlift up. And once you've built that strength, step two is to finally convert that strength into power. You know, so how much force can you produce from that strength and how effectively can you produce it? You know, and especially unilateral power. So you know when you're on the field and you're stepping off your left foot or your right foot, you're changing that direction. It's always off one foot apart from a header obviously. For example, if you're a left winger and you want to cut inside and you're a right footer, if you step off that left foot you know if you've been working on your power training you can really zip past and accelerate past that right back, all within two to three steps. After step two, so after power training, we move on to step three, which really focus on the plyometrics or the speed, agility, quickness training. So that's focusing on the technical and the mechanical foundations of sprinting and focusing on your acceleration, deceleration mechanics, your agility, a lot of lighter training. So with power training, it's how efficiently you can produce power. But now I'm focusing on you know, how quickly can you plant your foot on the ground to how quickly you can lift your foot off the ground. So to get into detail, how quickly can you absorb the force as you plant your foot down to how quickly you can produce the force and activate your muscles as you lift your foot up. And I believe that's the basic mechanics with athletic performance right there. Those three steps, so build a strength foundation, convert that into power, then use sprinting, agility, acceleration, deceleration mechanics, lighter work, produce that power, 
effectively, efficiently, and most of all, quickly. So I hope I explained that really simply. We'll head back into the laptop for now. now I just finished talking about strength, now we're focusing on power. So as I mentioned, we don't have any power exercises in phase one and two, because obviously we're focusing on building the strength first. It's not until phase three where you focus on plyometrics, so that's box jumps in the gym, you know, uh, unilateral bounding, jumping off one leg, one foot, vertical jumping. Same time as plyometrics, we're gonna focus on the mechanics of sprinting, agility, um, acceleration, deceleration mechanics. So that's a lot of heel sprints, acceleration training, you no know, ladder drills. Again, how quickly can you absorb the force and how quickly can you produce it by lifting your foot off the ground. And finally, general conditioning. This is probably one of the most important actually out of all the attributes. So general conditioning is basically what focusing on your balance, your stability, injury prevention, flexibility, things of that nature, mobility. It's what a lot of players I feel overlook you know people feel like to get better you obviously need to do technical training you need to work on your sprinting you know gym work but i really do feel especially over the last season i've really tried to make my conditioning a high priority i honestly do feel general conditioning helps me recover quicker after a game after an intense training session especially coming back from surgery from personal experience i need to be really focusing on my conditioning so i can really improve that you know recovery time in between those intense days and game days. So general conditioning lasts all the way through the program, even through to phase four. Now I haven't really talked about phase four yet, but I will right now. So, and this phase lasts for eight weeks. And basically phase four is maintaining everything that you've improved on, everything you've gained athletically throughout the first three phases and really maintaining that in the fourth phase. So you'll be working on speed endurance for six weeks and continuous training for one week, and I'm gonna have one rest week as well. Especially, you know, you're heading into the last end or in the middle end of the season, and that's where you don't want the injuries to happen, but that's where it's most likely gonna happen as well. It's the same for the strength part here, so maximal strength for six weeks, strength endurance for six weeks as well. So I'm gonna do two strength sessions in the week and one foundational session and obviously a rest week as well to make up the eight weeks. So seven weeks of plyometric training, one week rest, seven weeks of speed, agility, quickness training, one week rest, and obviously balance, stability, flexibility, overall general conditioning will last the full eight weeks. Oh, anyway, that's my training schedule. If you guys were confused by it, or if you really want to follow my schedule, please don't hesitate to DM me, uh, even on the comments section below, just tell me, Nate, hey, mate, I'm confused. But that's basically the training program. Now, as for my testing, obviously, last Friday, I didn't end up doing day two of my testing, and I just did an aerobic conditioning testing today, as you've seen. Now, I've got a few more tests, obviously, so I'm gonna spread that out over the next week or two as well. Now, over the next week or two, say if I have continuous training, for example, I'll use you know an aerobic endurance test. I'll take that opportunity because it's basically the same type of training. If I've got to do a speed endurance test, I'll do that during my sprint training uh, workout on Thursday morning. Okay, let's get my third meal of the day. Alright, so here I'm just doing a foundational strength session, guys. There'll be an opportunity for me to go in depth with this over the next three weeks. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Comment down below your training log for the day as well. Also, if you want to become part of the 10,000 Hours Project, please hit that subscribe button. It'll help support this channel and grow this project even bigger. Alright, guys, I'll see you on tomorrow's episode.